Hi, Christian Chudo here. Today we're going to talk about time priority mode in photography. We are going, in this tutorial, we're going to learn the time priority mode on your camera. Starting with this instance, we're going to take one small step at a time and play with only one setting until you are able to understand it and control it completely. We are going, we are going to see a few examples and reach a conclusion. In this case, what is time priority and how it works, uh, why we should use it and when, and what shutter speed to select in which situation. Time priority is the setting of your camera when you can choose how long to expose an image and uh, let the camera choose the other two settings of the triangle uh, of exposure, ISO and aperture. The ISO setting can be also locked and the only one variable will be the aperture. You can switch to time priority mode by dialing the settings control on your camera on TV symbol. Depending on your camera, it might be slightly different, but I'm sure you'll find it in your camera manual, if not already obvious. Why choose time priority mode? Telling the camera how long to expose is useful in mainly two situations. One is freezing the action and second uh, is uh, night photography. First of all, freezing the action for action shots or moving objects. You might be in a situation where either the camera moves or the subject moves. You need to make sure you have the shortest uh, time exposure in order to stop the moving and have a sharp image. The faster the action goes, the shorter the time you need to let the light on the sensor. The general rule of thumb is a thousandth of a second to five hundredth of a second for a very fast moving object. For just normal situation with moving people, normally two fiftieth of a second, a hundred twenty fifth or a hundredth of a second will do just fine. Times slower than 19th of a second will start to show some blur. The second uh, situation you would choose time uh, priority is long exposure in low light and night photography for special effects. There are many situations where there's not enough light and you need uh, to expose for longer to allow the sensor to get some light. Also night photography. Uh, the long exposure can have spectacular effects with the long light moving trails. Just word of advice, every time you expose more than 19th of a second, you will need a tripod. You'll never be able to have a steady camera, even if I keep other photographers pretending they have a steady uh, hand and they can actually shoot a sharp image uh, slower than 19th of a second. What time settings you can choose uh, in time priority mode? Well, you can go from increments to from 8 thousandths of a second six thousandths of a second, four thousandths of a second, uh, you can go in increments slower and slower and slower until you reach a second, two seconds, three seconds, five seconds, four seconds, up to 30 seconds. A normal camera will uh, allow you to expose for 30 seconds in time priority mode. Longer than that you will need to switch on manual, basically that is the bulb mode. Now uh, I'm going to show you a few exercises, I'm going to move on to my computer to show you the exercises I've done, just to prove how the camera reacts. We just uh, jumped on the computer where I uh, would like to show you the uh, exercises of uh, the best exercise how you can learn by yourself how to control the time priority. Basically what I've done is uh, took a bunch of pictures and, and tested the time priority setting from the fastest uh, shutter speed to the slowest. Uh, all these images have been taken in full sunlight in midday and it shows just normal garden hose with a strong water stream. The shorter the time setting, the more clear you can see the drops. The camera settings are time priority mode, obviously. ISO is on automatic so you don't have to worry about it and the camera will choose the aperture by itself. So in this image we just started 80, uh, 8 thousandths of a second. You can see the drops. Of course, the drops are not very clear here, but the water stream is quite strong. Just continuing uh, with the next image, six thousandths of a second, not a big deal of a difference. Uh, four thousandths of a second, three thousandths of a second, two thousandths of a second, we're starting to see a little bit of blur. Um, one thousand five hundredth of a second, uh, one thousandths of a second, and moving on 750 all the increments and you will see the slower the time the time setting the more trail we're gonna see and the less the more blurry the water becomes this is 250th of a second 
and this is 180th of a second. About this 180 and 125, I would take images for a normal shot where people are moving. Of course, this is a very strong water stream, but as you can see, 125th of a second, 125th of a second, already we see uh, the trails of the movement. Moving on, just note that the separate uh, the separate drops quite clear is we can say it's clear I mean we can still still see the individual drops now from now on 19th of a second I usually don't shoot slower than uh, 125th of a second starting now 19th of a second I would definitely need a tripod so moving on as you can as we can uh, move to the slower and slower the water stream becomes more and more blurry and it will give eventually that nice effect but that's a different tutorial from now on the camera has reached its limitation the, sh the smallest aperture and the fastest ISO so from now on camera stopped being able to compensate for a normal exposure and the image will become uh, overexposed this is what happens so this is just for illustration purposes we're gonna move to the night shot so I took all these these images on a bridge and just for illustration pro, uh, purposes how time time setting will will act I started again with 8,000 of a second in this image you'll see the camera is actually limited on the other way so the ISO is the biggest the largest 3200 and the aperture is the widest in this case the lens has a wide aperture 2.8 8,000 of a second we don't see anything moving 6,000 of a second 6,000 pick a little bit of detail 1500, 1000 of a second, 750, 500, uh, 350, 250. From 250, the camera is starting to pick up a little bit of detail. Again, ISO is the, at maximum size and the aperture is the biggest, so the camera is keen on grabbing as much light as possible. Now, 180th of a second, we can see the, the cars still underexposed for the, the normal night scene but 180th of a second it shows you clear cars, cars are in movement 125th of a second I can see still the, the cars very clear 190th of a second the cars I'm not sure if you notice they're becoming slightly blurry because they don't have much speed this is again 90th of a second 90th of a second just three shots 16th of a second we are definitely starting to see a bit of blur and the cars have uh, starting to have very very short light trails uh, moving 45th of a second not a very good example this one is not a good example either 30th of a second as you can see a little bit of uh, trails this is just to prove a point this is still this is 20th of a second definitely the cars are becoming blurry so moving on 15th of a second definitely we're starting to pick up light trails the size of the light trails is given by the distance of the car going uh, for a 15th of a second and the slower we can get the longer the light trails so as you can see here here six of a second there's few meters so the cars are traveling you know reasonably 50 k's an hour moving on we're starting to have the cars disappearing well this is the third of a second a third of a second and the light trails are becoming longer this is half a second, this is three quarters of a second. The cars are basically disappearing and we are leftovers only with the uh, light trails. Now this is one second and a half. As you can see, the light trails are becoming longer and longer. This is how long it takes for a car to, take to, to cover this distance within one and a half seconds. From now on, two seconds, uh, three seconds, four seconds, and we are starting to get that spectacular look with the light trails that everyone is looking after. And as you can see, those cars were actually standing there. That's why they appear blurry. But if they would be in motion, they would not appear at all. For example, in this in this one, you don't we don't see any cars. And we ended up with 15 seconds, and this is 20 seconds and 30 seconds. As you can see in the last few few images, the lighting level in this scene is, is constant and that is because the camera is uh, adjusting the other settings to have a proper exposure. So the longer we can get, the f-stop, the aperture gets smaller and the ISO gets also smaller. This is ISO 100, the aperture is f16. Unfortunately, 30 seconds is the limit of the camera can get us 
and this is where we stop from now on we just need to time to switch on the bulb mode settings but that's a subject to a different tutorial in conclusion as observed in the exercises the time priority mode is the choice when you need to action uh, to freeze the action or for night long exposure as a professional photographer i choose to use time priority in daylight photography within decent levels of light in between 500th of a second and 125th slower than 19th of a second i would need a tripod before i give you a homework to do i just want to tell you a little story when i was in the primary school we had a geography teacher who would actually not teach us any subjects will never tell us anything but she would request us to look at the maps of various countries in our manual and uh, try to t come up with a story and uh, to observe the cities mountains rivers and so on as students we had to use our brains by exercising and discovering ourselves rather than being told what uh, what is where I remember to this day the maps of various countries and uh, by experimenting yourself rather than taking information given by others this is absolutely the best way and the fastest way to learn anything about everything After the three sets of exercises, you should know what time setting and time priority is and which shutter speed uh, is best for each lighting condition.